Transforming a living space into a dream home can be a daunting task, but it doesn't have to be difficult. For years, I've helped homeowners with simple, easy to achieve solutions. All it takes is seeing design challenges as an opportunity for creativity and innovation. Welcome to In The Room. So today we're designing for Tahira all the way up in Canada. And she has presented us with the problem of a small one bedroom apartment that needs to incorporate a lot. Hi, my name is Tahira and I'm from Mississauga, Canada. So my brother and I are actually gonna be renovating the space together. It's a one bedroom uh, condo with a living area, den, a kitchen, bath. And so far we're gonna be kind of pulling up the flooring, painting the walls. The entire space is kind of open for me to do what I want. I want to kind of fashion it in the Japandi style. I really love just muted colors, you know, just clean lines, simple furniture, kind of calming vibe to the entire area so that I can really relax in the space. So I'm really excited. Tahira and her brother are gonna renovate the space together and they say that everything is up for grabs from the flooring to the wall color. I'm so glad that the wall color is something we can change because this burgundy color is not gonna work for any Japandi style room. You can see the rest of the space right here and I wanna point out one curious little detail. Take a look at the kitchen peninsula. Normally, you don't see this shape, this sort of half circle demi lune shape is quite original and different. And I think the idea was to put two stools here and turn this into a breakfast nook, but I'm gonna push back against that and you'll see why. Here's the space from the windows looking back. Whatever furniture that we bring into this room has to be carefully positioned because no matter what, we're gonna need circulation from this hallway all the way over here. And especially with the Japandi style in mind, we're not gonna to wanna to clutter up this main living room area. We've also got these unsightly sort of objects that we can't quite get rid of on our main wall. We gotta hide this somehow, how can we hide it? We're gonna look into that. One of the things that Tahira had mentioned having in this area right here is perhaps a reading nook, but I'm gonna push back against that and I'll tell you why. This area of the room I think is actually very important. Uh, the way that this room is laid out, this can either be the seating area or the dining area, but it's not really a nook area, and I'll tell you why. It's got so much light infusing that corner of the room that that really has to be a space that works um, in a big way. Big concept space, and I'm thinking dining room is the best idea for that space. So here's the space as the developers would like us to use it. A lot of clutter. Now what I'm thinking of course is instead of that television right there, we go with something flat screen right up on the wall. And if we were to keep the living space in the main proud sort of well lit space as we've got it right now, it would make television watching a bit of a chore. Of course, we can put the television on a reticulating arm and make it face towards the living room space. But even then we've got issues. Why? because we've got all this light streaming in and that's gonna create a lot of glare on the television. So I gotta say, if you wanna use the TV well, this corner is not great as a living room corner. On the other side, we've got a dining room space. Now that obviously makes a lot of sense because we've got the kitchen right here and you can move the dining right next to it. But if we think about this in the opposite way, where we make this main area, the living room space, and then this top area, the dining room space, take a look at what that does for us. First of all, this is a great size and shape for a nice big dining room table. And when you go big on a dining room table, you gotta keep in mind, lots of other functions can be used on top of a large dining table like this. You can use it as a work surface very easily. The key, is to find comfortable dining chairs. Many times dining chairs are just comfortable enough to last you through the two hour meal, but you wouldn't necessarily want to lounge on them. But in this case, because we're really trying to pack a lot of utility into every corner of the room without cluttering with too much furniture, it's gonna be key to find comfortable dining chairs so that this dining table can be used not just for dining, but also for working and for lounging. We've moved the dining table up to where the windows are. What do we do with the rest of the space? I think the clear answer is to put one big sofa. Now, I'm thinking really large, maybe nine foot long, gives you plenty of seating options along the entire length of the sofa, and they all face the TV centered on it. Now, on the off chance that Tahir has guests and they're all watching television and the nine foot sofa isn't seating all of them, 
Remember, we've got comfortable dining chairs coming in, and these can easily be swiveled around to offer more seating options. Now, I'm leaving this Demi Loon as an open question for Tahira. My inclination would be to not put any seating underneath it. It's almost like you don't need it. You've got a nice big dining table in the proudest section of the room with a beautiful view as well. Instead of facing your dark, dim kitchen with two little stools around this small semicircle, I say move all of these dining scenarios out of the semicircular kitchen peninsula and move them up to your gorgeous new dining table. So what would this look like? We've got two major functions here, living and dining, and they're all taken care of with a minimal amount of furniture. The living room especially, one large sofa, one large coffee table in front of it, a large centered rug, and we also see this one questionable piece right here. What's that gonna do for us? I'll get to that in just a second. Tahira mentioned that she might even change the flooring. I say leave the flooring as is. The rug is going to clear up all that visual clutter enough so that we can place our pieces of furniture on top of that. The size of the rug, this is an eight by 10. The idea is to make sure the color is light so that we play against the dark color of the floor and bring up the vibrancy of the room. Leave this area right here uncluttered for this piece of furniture right here that's gonna be on casters. Now, what I like about this side table, first of all, is that it's tucked away in a corner. It's obviously very useful for the sofa, and at the same time, visually unobtrusive. With this little object being on casters and no stools around the demi loon, that means you can pull this guy out easily. And by the way, ease of use is as much a feature of Scandinavian design as is minimalism. So for me, to put an object on casters in the corner of the space is an intuitive way of using this circulation zone if there's nothing there cluttering it. Because now we can pull this guy out, we can use that as a bar cart, you can put your champagne on there, pull it over here, you can put your alcohol on there. It even has a built-in bookcase. A couple shelves in there is gonna make it easier to make different areas of your house be your reading nook. One of the things that Tahira asked for is to accentuate the beautiful stone wall that her brother built for her. This stone wall is such a unique feature that I can see why you want to really bring attention to it. There's two schools of thought for how to bring someone's attention to an architectural feature in a room, either bringing contrasting colors or complementary colors. Here we've just got the wrong color. The maroon walls bring down the darkness of the room. What would work much better is to pick one of the lighter colors inside the stone wall and paint the entire space that lighter color. Not only will it elevate the mood of the room, but it's going to work with the wall and I think help draw attention to the wall. Okay, but let's focus on the rest of the plan. Obviously the big attention grabber here is the sofa and you'll notice the color right off the bat. I think because the stone wall is such a strong feature on that side of the room, you need at least one object to hold and anchor the other side of the room as well. And that's what this sofa is doing for us. This color is mauve, pink, some version thereof. It should obviously be a color you love. If you don't love this color, find a sofa that's large and in charge and has um, a color with some personality to it. Because again, the living room is gonna need its own center of gravity. I found it on Cherish for $3,495. I don't know if that seems like a lot of money to you, but it's about middle of the range for a sofa, especially a large one like this. Okay, so let's see what this will look like. Ta-da! The unity of this room reads immediately. You've got a large piece of art, a large sofa, a large coffee table, a large TV, a large rug, and it's all sort of one statement. For me, this area is one of the more difficult spaces to make work with a minimalist look because you've got that diagonal piece, you've got multiple materials that are butted up against one another, and basically you're looking at the back of the carcasses of your kitchen cabinets. So how do we make it work? Wall art. What I'm using is string art. This is from Mexico. I found this on kathyquo.com. But the idea is that you find some object that can drape over all of the clutter that you're trying to hide. Uh, the dining chairs. Now, this is going to be a very important selection for you. I picked these for a few reasons. One, the backrest doesn't go higher than the armrests. So from a visual clutter perspective, this becomes streamlined because it fits right next to and under, effectively, the dining table. Two, it's got the comfort elements that we need. It's got both armrests and a padded surface to sit on. 
It's important to find comfortable dining chairs because they have to do double duty. You've only got one sofa in the space and if you've got more visitors than that sofa can hold, these dining chairs are gonna be swiveled around from the dining table and be additional seating in your space. So look for a little bit of comfort here. And finally, some macrame. It works really well with so many different styles and I think there's a sense in Scandinavian design that really goes towards the handmade, the handcrafted objects that can welcome an object like this. And why I think it really helps us is if we look in the perspective, that air vent, that air conditioning register that needs a little bit of hiding can be very well hidden with some macrame. To here asks for potentially a reading nook in this corner and I'm pushing back against that specifically because the, the function of this side of the room has to be the most important feature here. And a dining table can also be used as a reading area, um, whereas a chaise lounge can only be used to lounge in. So let's keep this space functioning for us as best as we can and make it work as a reading nook by bringing in comfortable dining chairs. The coffee table, I went to allmodern.com. Uh, now, the coffee table you can go in many different directions, but I went with something visually clean, mainly because we're going for the Japandi style, um, but also still quite large because it's going to be seated in front of a massive sofa. So you're really looking for scale and simplicity in design. I've broken your bank a couple times on this project, but that's always the problem with really scaled back minimalist designs. You would think it's the opposite, the lesser number of furniture, the less money you have to spend but it actually goes the other way around. When you've only got a couple pieces of furniture that draw the eye with each piece that you put in there, each piece ends up being relatively expensive. But the coffee table is probably gonna have to be something really high quality because it's one of the few objects that's sitting in the room. So you're gonna have to invest. So we went from a super cluttered plan to something much simpler by flipping the two around, putting the dining room up where the windows are, and that's where the breakfast nook and reading nook will be around this gorgeous dining table. Bringing the living room right here in front of the television, which makes so much sense. Keeping the television there is obviously crucial. And ignoring this Demi Loon uh, kitchen peninsula, because I think it's a trap. It's a trap to put chairs underneath it and try to force this area to feel cute and cozy when really you've got all the coziness and cuteness you need in the rest of the room. And this should just be a staging area for food and drink. Well, this was a lot of fun. I like designing in a minimalist style for once. Usually I'm putting objects and art all over this place, but in this case, we're really trying to keep all the visual clutter down. Maybe one or two bird sculptures, maybe one or two pieces of wall art, and that's it. I hope this has been useful for you to hear up. Um, if you've got some questions or comments, leave them in the section below. And if you've got a design question that you don't know what to do with, write to us at In The Room and hopefully we'll get to it next. Till next time. If you've got a home makeover project you need help with or a room you'd like to reimagine, drop us a DM at shelter on Instagram and tell us your story. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube so you don't miss a new episode.